All right, thanks very much. It's nice to be back in person. I'm Brad Chamberlain. I'm the technical lead of the Chapel Project at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. I'm also an affiliate faculty member here. So if anybody is here as a student and needs some HPC outside expertise, always happy to come over and help with that. I have this bad habit in this workshop of always submitting the most boring talk title possible. And then I do something crazy and come up with a dumb talk title the night before. So my dumb talk title this time is Performance at Any Cost, HPC and 24 Hours of Le Mans. Um, HPC for me means high performance computing. Uh, Le Mans, if you're like me and don't know much about car racing, is a big car race apparently. Um, so starting by stating the obvious, parallel computing has become ubiquitous. When I was here in grad school, uh, if you want to do parallel computing, you had to have access to a supercomputer, or maybe you'd build a commodity cluster. Of course, nowadays, parallelism is falling from the sky. Pretty much any system you buy is going to have a multi-core processor and probably a GPU. If you need something bigger, cloud computing is happy to sell you cycles that can, you can run on something that's a lot like a supercomputer or a commodity cluster. Um, so I think there's this conception, oh, sorry, no, I meant to say uh, transitions, I'm not used to giving live talks anymore. Um, despite the fact that we've got all this uh, parallelism available to us, supercomputing is still a thing. So this is the Frontier supercomputer that was uh, turned on at Oak Ridge in the last year or so. It's 74 cabinets, which you can think of as like sort of refrigerator sized um, chassis. It's got 9,000 plus AMD CPUs and 37,000 plus AMD GPUs for a total of 8 million cores. It's breaking a ton of records, number one on the top 500, number two on the green 500, number one on the HPL MXP. Um, so supercomputing is still a thing, um, but you can all do parallel computing at home nowadays too. So this is the transition I missed before. Um, my strained analogy is I think sometimes when I run into people in mainstream computing, if you will, they sort of have this sense of like, gosh, I bet those supercomputer users have some pretty swanky programming languages. And this is where my bad talk title comes in. This is sort of like me riding in the bus and saying, gosh, I bet those Le Mans racers have a pretty enviable driving experience. And I think that both of these are pretty big misconceptions because both of these communities care about speed, 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 and then barely maybe think about the users and, and their experiences. Um, in the case of HPC, what that means is that even for fairly simple computations like these two benchmarks here that I don't have time to teach you about, stream triad and HPCC random access, you have to write a lot of code to do what is conceptually a fairly simple operation. Uh, that's because we build these very fast machines. We build sort of the minimal models to target them. And then as a community, we don't do much above that, or at least traditionally we haven't. So Chapel, which I'm here representing today, is a language that was developed by my group to try to amend this situation. It's a modern parallel programming language, by which I mean sort of post C, C++, Fortran era. It's portable and scalable, so you can run Chapel on a laptop like this Mac or the largest supercomputers you can get access to. It's open source and collaborative, being developed at GitHub. And it, keeping in the theme of this workshop, it was pioneered and developed here in Seattle um, at Cray, uh, which was recently acquired by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So I now work for HP, and the Chapel project continues there. The two main goals of Chapel are to support general parallel programming, which you can think of as if I, you got some parallel algorithm and some parallel hardware, you ought to be able to do that in Chapel, or we're failing at that goal. And the second one is to make parallel programming at scale far more productive than it is today. Um, so returning to the two benchmarks and conventional programming models for HPC that I showed you briefly. Um, these are the rewrites of those large chunks of code in Chapel. And you can see it's much more concise. You might even be able to figure out what it does if you looked at it for a couple minutes. And this is in part because we're a more modern language and in part because we're a language where we developed uh, the features with parallelism and locality built in as first class features from the start. And happily, not only is the code concise, but it also performs quite well. So these are scalability graphs, up is better, going up to 9,000 cores of a Cray XC. In the top graph, you can see we're basically neck and neck with the reference version such that you can't really distinguish the lines. In the bottom, this is a case where Chapel actually vastly outperforms the reference version because the compiler can do a lot more when you give it a lot more room to uh, optimize with. All right, so I've got three highlights I wanna cover in my short amount of time today. These are highlights since the last time we had this workshop. Many of you may not have even been here as students at that time. Uh, so you have to check the archives to know where we were then. The first highlight is Chapel support for GPUs. So around the time of our last workshop, um, a common thing that would come up in my talks is I would say the same thing I said to you about any parallel algorithm on any parallel hardware. And at that time, GPUs were just starting to become a big thing on HPC systems. So the obvious question was, so does Chapel support GPUs? And I'd have to very embarrassedly say, well, you can interoperate with conventional models and call out to them, but no, not directly in Chapel. 
which of course was not part of that goal. Um, so more recently, we are targeting GPUs using Chapel's traditional features for parallelism locality. So the same features we've had in language all along. And I'm going to basically teach you a dangerous amount of Chapel and show you how we apply to GPUs. Uh, and so this is going to be sort of your whirlwind introduction to language. This is one of those two benchmarks I showed you, stream triad. We're basically going to declare three arrays. We're then going to multiply one of the arrays by a scalar, add it to a second array, assign it to a third array. And as I've written this, this is basically a multi-core program. If you ran this on a 64-core AMD, you'd use all 64 cores. But if you ran it on that large frontier system, you'd never, excuse me, you'd never leave that first compute node that you started running on. Because nothing we've done here refers to those remote nodes or locales, as we call them in chapel. But I can amend that if I throw in this additional loop. This coferall loop is a loop that executes each iteration as a distinct task. This locales array represents the compute nodes on which my program is running. And this on clause says this task should run on this locale. So here what I've done is basically fire off a, a task per compute node that I'm running on. And then each of those tasks is going to run my multi-core stream like before. So I'm now using all of the cores across all the compute nodes of my supercomputer or cluster. But this is a CPU only program. So this is what we've been running for you know, decades now. Nothing here refers to GPUs, but again, with a small change, we can start doing that. So here's another code for all loop. This says on my node, let me iterate over all of my GPUs. Let me run on that GPU. And then I'm gonna do the same shared memory computations before, but I'm gonna allocate the arrays in GPU memory, do the computations using the GPU cores. So now I've got a GPU only program. Um, nothing's gonna run on the CPUs other than the coordination code to launch the kernels and sort of tear people down, stuff like that. But with a small change, I can use all of my GPUs and all my CPUs. I'm using this cobegin construct. This is a compound statement that creates a separate task for each of its child statements. So the first one is gonna run my GPU loop across all my GPUs. The second statement is gonna run my conventional stream triad across all my CPUs. And now I'm basically driving all of the CPUs and GPUs across my large parallel system. This is, uh, is work that is fresh off the presses, just came out in the last uh, release of Chapel. And the performance we're getting right now is not quite in line with the reference version where we'd like it to be. So these are graphs where the x-axis is the problem size, y-axis is performance, higher is better. The green represents the reference CUDA version on the left on NVIDIA, uh, the HIP version on the right on AMD. The top blue line is kind of the best chapel version. Other blue lines are sort of uh, stepping stones that got us to that point. And you can see at large problem size, we're quite competitive with the reference, but at smaller problem sizes, there's still a gap. We still have some uh, overheads we need to eliminate or amortize. All right, highlight number two. Uh, I had to remind myself what I talked about five years ago. Five years ago, my talk was basically a plea saying, we think chapel is ready for real users. If you know any, please send them our way. And happily since that time, we've had a number of applications of Chapel come online. Um, these range from things like traditional HPC applications, uh, simulations of the physical world, um, lots of earth modeling types of things, which I'm happy to see. And then also some kind of unusual data science-y kinds of things. And in the remaining time, I'm just gonna mention two of them very, very briefly, more briefly than I expected. Um, this first one is kind of a traditional, whoops, too far, a traditional HPC computation doing computational fluid dynamics on 3D structures. This was developed at Polytechnique Montreal. And I'll say that the students have found this, they basically dragged the professor kicking and screaming to chapel because they found it so much more productive to use. Their professors basically come around because you can now have master students do a project that used to take two years. They can do it in three months with chapel. And he's delighted about that. My second example is a little bit more unusual for HPC. It's basically a Python library that gives you a framework for interactive high performance computing. So you as a user are in your normal Jupyter notebook, writing Python code, making what look like familiar NumPy and Pandas calls. But the implementation is written in Chapel and running out on a supercomputer potentially. So you can run on these uh, terabyte sized arrays in real time interactively, uh, kind of being none the wiser as a Python user. And I'm really short on time. So I'm just going to say, this was written at DoD, it's open source. And a lot of the reasons that they used Chapel was because it's very close to Pythonic. They're trying to appeal to Python programmers. This is a performance graph that I don't have time to talk about. It's got, uh, I can't even say numbers anymore, 100,000 cores of AMD room, Rome on the blue line, 73,000 cores on the green line. So this is going up to very, very large scale, um, getting massive results in 100 lines of chapel. Highlight three is that our team has grown from 12 people to 21 full-time people working on chapel over the last five years. And let me summarize. Chapel is unique among programming languages, I will assert. The vendor neutral GPU support that we've been developing recently is maturing rapidly. 
Chapel is being used in the field for productive parallel computing at scale. And we're very interested in helping find new users and helping them out and also fostering new collaboration. So if you're here and this looks at all interesting with respect to your research, please let us know. That's my talk. Thanks very much.